Hey guys, Blade Arts here, and today I'm going to be doing Blast of the Past, pretty much uh, an older game that I played during my childhood. And this is Dark Watch, and I really like this game overall. It's it's one of my one of my favorite games. It was it was published by Capcom, and in the United Kingdom, it was in uh, European Union, it was published by Ubisoft. So this game, this game is awesome. It was developed by High Moon Studios. And uh, it didn't do very well. Reception, basically, when it first... I don't like interrupting. I'll let you guys see this little cinematic here before I talk more about the game. They are the Dark Watch. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. And th this is an amazing game, guys. You're really going to like it. Hell, if you, uh, if you want to play it, check it out. I'm sure you have your sources if you need to check that out. Not adv advocating anything. <laughs> and uh, wow, this is an amazing game, guys. The official name is shortened. I did kind of shorten it. It's Dark Watch Curse of the West. And this was a 2005 first person shooter released for the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. And uh, yeah, it mi mixes Western, horror, steampunk. And it's really, really awesome. Lots of undead, lots of vampires. I'm not sure if you can really call the skeleton monsters vampires. I think they're more ghoul, ghoulish ghouls. And it was mainly met with positive reception. A lot of people liked it, but there just wasn't enough interest for a sequel. The studio tried to find a publisher, but they were unable to find a publisher for the sequel. And that really sucks. They they had the technical demo footage. They had they had the game in development, but they just couldn't find anyone willing to publish it with them. And in 2006, the studio was actually acquired by Vivendi, Activision, Activision Blizzard. So, behind you, a bloody trail of robbery and revenge. Ahead of you, one last train to rob. Tonight, your life will end. So the studio, the studio behind this is actually responsible for the a lot of the Transformers games. The recent Transformers games that came out, and they're they're actually developing a 2013 Deadpool game. So if it's as good as what they've been doing originally, I'm not sure how many uh, original developers are still at at the studio, but Deadpool 2013 release date, I'm definitely going to be checking that out. And uh, for this video, guys, you will be getting a little bit of audio problems. Uh, sometimes the audio kind of kicks in, kicks out. For the most part, during cinematics and uh, less less intensive parts, it's okay. You won't notice it that bad. But for other parts, it can get kind of kind of annoying. So I hope you guys don't mind too much. I was unable to to get it working good for that. Yeah, and they were actually going to. They were going to do an entire, this was just going to be an entire series, like a Mia franchise, like Halo or something, or just something like that, like they'd have a movie tie-in, and uh, lots of sequels, it, I guess it just didn't sell enough to get, to get any more interest from publishers, which is really unfortunate, because I love these Weird West, these Wild West kind of games, they're really fun to me. I remember uh, Time Splitters 2 had a Wild West level, and that was really cool. And really, what's not to love about this game? You're a monster hunter, you're a Dark Watch, mem you become a member of the Dark Watch, killing demons, killing vampires. Seriously, wh what's not to like about that, guys? And yeah, uh, so far though, even on the hardest difficulty, I believe I'm on Deadeye. I haven't really noticed it being too hard. But this is the first level, so it might get a lot it might get a lot more difficult later on. And uh poor guy. You can't really save that guy. It's eaten alive. Yeah, I'm not sure what you would call these. They're not really vampires, they're just basically reanimated skeletons. Well, they might be 
No, I don't think they're vampires. I think they're just ghouls, basically. Mindless slaves of the Dracula boss guy. This guy gives you a pretty sweet gun. This is the official gun of the Dark Watch. Got this sweet, sweet blade on the end. You can use that for melee attacks. And uh, you can actually, if you hold the R1 key, if you hold your fire key, you can actually get it to fan bullets. That's uh, just auto repeats, so you don't have to click too many, too many times. It does get kind of inaccurate though. The recoil can be kind of brutal. Oh, I see. That's what I was talking about right there. I actually get it. Managed to get it working. Get kind of brutal recoil. It's pretty cool. Good way to get off a bunch of rounds. I think it's a little quicker than than just shooting manually. about the zombies right and the ghouls. Let's just Take let's just keep robbing the train. No clue what you're into. No makes you wonder what kind of it makes you wonder what kind of intel he did on this train. What, what kind of recon? I guess he just kind of figured some law enforcement type agency would have a lot of gold. There he is. Lazarus, King of the Vampires. He kind of sends a blast wave. Raises a hell of a lot of undead ghouls. Oh no. Yeah, even point blank. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna do any damage to it. King of Vampires there, dude. And, uh, yeah. The game actually starts off, starts you off with a boss battle this early. Didn't expect, certainly wasn't expecting that, but that's a cool little, cool little, uh, gameplay design. You're bleeding design. pretty bad. Can you move? And, uh, Lazarus, he's made us a vampire. He bit our neck when he did that before he ran up top. Didn't exactly finish this off, just kind of turned us right away. And uh, yeah, when you turn into a vampire, there's a new mechanic here. Uh, instead of blood canteens, well, I'm sure you can actually use blood canteens later on in the game, but with this, you kind of, if you get the blood off your dead enemies, it's kind of like God of War, you know how you get blood off them. If you get the blood off your dead enemies, it'll increase your health. And this is kind of like Halo 2, it kind of borrows from that. You, you've got a shield, basically, that they have to whittle down your health shield, your blood shield, before they can actually hurt your... before they can actually hurt your HP. Cool. And for this little boss battle, he just summons them in waves. After you kill the first wave, he'll teleport to you. And he kind of just... He will hit you. There's not really any way to avoid the damage as far as I know. But just unload into him. See, he teleports back over here and he summons his... his all of his little... About, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, and he summons about four zombies each time. And they're easy to deal with. Even on the hardest mode, they shouldn't even get close to you. you just let Cassidy tank them. Cassidy will get some aggro on most of them. And once again, he'll teleport to you. Gets real close. Just unload into him. Really, your blood shield should protect you for the first attack. Go figure how that works too, guys. You know, uh, your favorite games from 
from your childhood. I'm not sure if you guys can name a few, but they they don't end up getting sequels, eh? They just kind of get stuck in development hell because if the studio closes, the studio gets bought out, or just publishers not interested in making a sequel, and that's happened to a few of my games. I know uh, 3DO was responsible for a lot of my favorite games. I really like the Army Men franchise, the Army Men games with Sarge, Sarge's Heroes. I really, really love those games. Basically anything set in that universe, I was a huge fan of. And I think the, the company went bankrupt actually, and they just they just stopped making the games. Nobody bought out the, the intellectual rights to the, to the gameplay, to the, to the army men creative whatever you want to call it I'm not sure the exact term here but the rights to make more games in the army men universe nobody really was interested in that I know they tried to do the the whole bionic army men the blue guy alpha or whatever the hell they called it that's kind of lame Yeah, I, w I really wish there'd be more Army Men games, and just like this, this one's not getting a sequel, it's not really cool. If you want to see a sequel, just, but sometimes games just don't get enough. Maybe they, the marketing team didn't get enough marketing out there for people to know it exists. Because this game is not a horrible game, it actually got pretty good reception, and a lot of people like the atmosphere of it. But it just didn't get enough sales, you know. What, what can you do? Watch my back if you want to live. Chasing us down. This guy's powerful as fuck. Even blowing straight TNT right beside him. It's not gonna take him down. He one does not simply kill demon lords that easily. And his primal instincts kick in. It's Lazarus's curse, Jericho. There's nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. And yes, you resurrect your own little demon horse here. Straight from hell. And another thing I was, uh, I, uh, this reminded me of was the, I'm not sure if manga is the correct term, but there's a nice little mini series called Priest, and it's set in the Wild West too. So it has a great story, it involves demons, I'm not sure if the devil, but it involves vampires and uh, vampires, zombies, I'm not sure if you can exactly call them zombies, but it really starts out great. I think I'm up on to the ninth, ninth manga. I think it was made in Korea or something, and you can't actually call those mangas. So, apologize for my for my lack of knowledge in that field. But Priest, it's really cool. I suggest you check it out. They did make they did make a movie kind of loosely based on Priest, but I didn't like the movie at all. Christian Bale is a great actor, but. Not even he could, not even he could do, fix that. Just, just no. It, it was pretty retarded. And yeah, this is a pretty cool part. You don't see these too often these days. Well, uh, the recent Halo game had something like this. You know, uh, the on rails segment. I guess you couldn't say the Halo game, because the Halo game kind of had dodging elements where you had to uh, get past certain doors. But it's uh, pretty similar to this. You know, for these kind of segments, uh, the, the on-rail enemies popping up. But, yeah, that's really cool. I like this. It reminds me of a game I played in the arcade. But you know me with my terrible memory. I'm not going to remember what it was called. But you don't really see this all that often. Anymore. I like them. I like these kind of segments. Really. I'm not going to detract anything from the game for having this. 
It, it mixes things up. Wouldn't it be that fun just to have a game with just pure FPS, first person shooter. You, you like seeing little little side things here. But not if they're forced in, you know. I like seeing side side little things like this, but they have to be they 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 have to be good. Like actually thought like the developer thought about it, implemented it correctly. Because if it's just forced on, like you know a lot of games these days like forcing on multiplayer for no good reason. I guess just to kinda kinda discourage pirates. Like hey, uh, if you pirate our game you're not gonna be able to play multiplayer, you're gonna be able to play single player. And it's not cool if they're if they're doing that to a single player game and they're just kinda tacking it on. It's not cool in my opinion. And here's another little little part of the boss battle with Lazarus. Chasing us down. He does do two attacks here, I believe. He does that. You can shoot the projectiles. You shoot, or you can just dodge in between, in between the spaces they have. And this, uh, I'm not even sure if you can avoid this. You probably can, but as you can see, I pretty much get hit by it every time. With either of you. Keep going. We're almost there. Them with bullets. You do get infinite bullets, so you don't need to run out. Worry about running out. And that too. Uh, I think you can shoot it. I think you can shoot it before it went off. But in my playthrough, I kind of it's like a bomb. It took me down to bottom health. I only had a tick left. Actually, surprises I survived. I just kind of wailed into him until. Until this ended, and he died. Well, he didn't die until the section ended. So I wouldn't die there. And uh, yeah, guys, I will be continuing this. Ideally, I'm gonna have one episode a day released, and that's that's gonna be my schedule here. One episode a day of this. I'm not sure. Each episode will be 30 minutes. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys later.